when we want to go for the scale and when we want to go for the opponent switch. How would that drive the capabilities of a robot we want? From A where it starts to B to pick up the cube. So that's 180 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second. We probably need to know how much mass it has to move around. We can take it from the outside. This is a prototype intake. We're using old parts from uh, the 2015 third robot. Uh, I can make one to make it smaller. Coefficient of static friction. Um, in all force times the coefficient of static friction will give you your force of friction. So it's just a it's just a it's just a conversion between how much I push down and how far I can pull without something slipping. So what measurement should have been done to the same thing? We want to be able to get it in a way where it can be straight. Five, start the same distance on the road. Yeah. 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 Yeah
it's two holes. things. One is it's an abrasive. The other is it doesn't let the rivet sit flush like it needs to. Oh. So now you have a loose rivet with a bunch of stuff in between it that can grind around. You end up doing what's called wallowing out of a hole. Where the rivet bounces around between the two joints, gets wider, and now you have a ruined connection. The other way? Yeah, I down this is a Clico. We use Clicos to hold our robots together before we put any rivets in, so that way when all of our pieces fit together and find potential errors. So you use a Clico, you get a Clico tool, you put it in, and you pull down the handle. Then you can put it into wherever you want to have a potential rivet and release it. After we place the Clicos, we take them out and put in actual rivets. And then we use a pneumatic gun to take. You can feel yeah. when you've got it flat. Uh, yeah? yeah? You see? And then you just pull. Just yeah. when you hold it straight. Straight. Flat. Right. Yeah. 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 Very resistant to voltage measure being on it. So when you like try to where you are, like, you are that's where zeroing comes in. It's exactly what zeroing is about. You have now grasped the problem. <laughs> One reason they consider going this way is to get it away from the dry. Um, in front of we the one that it is. Theo, what are we doing? Uh, we are downloading last year's robot code, several modifications, in order to see if our motor controllers work. We didn't really do that, but that's okay. That actually looks really good. Oh, sweet. That's why I lost it from our fabric. Yeah, yeah it's like they're right in there. So one ohm plus one ohm is two ohms, so then you can simplify the circuit if you just want to look at like the time. Oh, so it's very important to see that dot. Yes. So that dot is important on the layout. You need to match the polarity of the diode up to the polarity of the wall. You just get the proper components that are on the sheet. Right, so like R1. And you want to be on the minus side. Yeah. Last year we got lucky now. There was Wi Fi. Right. We'll do that. On it, which is a perfectly valid way to tension. You should do it on the slides. So we set up this jig and it's to help us hold the carbon fiber tubing in place while we epoxy it to the aluminum joints. So this is the intake pivot gearbox. Yeah, I'm just gonna... What's it, what? It's stuck under the wheel with a nozzle under the gear. And the magnetic encoder's here to tell the deflection of the springs. We looped it all the way through here, and we can't go up through the shaft. So we have to... Oh, because it won't... Yeah. So, see? Happy birthday, dear Michael! Yes. 
I just like really want to take this whole. Hard to twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really hard. And then the This is fantastic. We should do this. Sorry, what? <laughs> oh, on the mill? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, wait. Uh, so those need to get done and... Well, tonight's weekend is to have a full robot and a full drive practice uh, Saturday and Sunday. We're soldering the uh, optical sensors on the intake and the uh, claw to a uh, level shifter so that they can get power from the starting board. Yeah, yeah. Right. So DIO zero. There's a left one. Hold on. Dean's List finalists are outstanding and passionate student leaders. Exemplifying leadership and commitment on the team and in their community. Congratulations to the heart of the world. The Industrial Design Award, sponsored by General Motors. It's clear how much time and meticulous thought went into the design of each component. Congratulations, Team 971! And after a couple iterations, it actually has turned out better. But uh, it took a lot of work to get there. But <laughs> learned a lot of fun stuff while I was doing it. When you're doing something that you're passionate about, it's and you have a team with people who are passionate about the same thing and, and it's just really infectious and it's really fun. One of the most common misperceptions about what we do about FIRST is that the end result is what happens on the competition field. But really, that's just a head fake. The end result is the preparation that leads us to what happens on the competition field and that's what really changes the students. So we like to take uh, really high quality mentors and have them work together with students and we think that helps drive the students to build cooler robots and learn more. Um, we do a lot of work with modeling and simulation and testing to help make the software at the level we are. And it's fun to be able to teach the kids industry best practices.
creativity and innovation. And as far as FRC goes, you can be creative on just your drivetrain, you can be creative on just a specific thing on your gearbox. Motor, a gearbox, and my output just flipped from usual. Hello friends, uh, here is an overview of all the sub-assemblies that are in the robot. The first thing we have is our drivetrain. Uh, we have a couple of sensors on our drivetrain. We have some normal incremental rotary encoder. This is one of the most exciting parts of the robot. It's a three-in-one, so you get three gearboxes for one. Can push back. We run absolute encoders on how to go about selecting gear ratios. Uh, mostly an introduction to give people a better sense of kind of an intuition about kind of figure out how they're important and why you want to consider certain things when selecting gear ratios. Hello, um, I'm Annie. It's nice to meet you. Thank you all for coming. How do we use the CAD software as we go through the build season? But SolidWorks actually does a lot of the math work for you. You're able to put in equations. Basically each part has a part number and then you try to optimize your design so you can iterate and go back and change something. Hi everybody, here are the sim, so we have the rotor, this back here is called the commutation ring, the motor controller for a brush. Power up! Go first! Alright, I think that's a rest. <laughs> <laughs>